parking ticket. I know I need you. I know I need you. Blessings and favor to all of you God's children. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this awesome Resurrection Sunday morning. Uh, I thank God for you all being here today. I thank God that, that God has blessed us, amen, to be able to come together to fellowship, especially on this day as we celebrate and honor and reverence our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Easter Resurrection Sunday morning. I bless God for you all. Thank you for being here. I'm your pastor, of course, Nikia McKay of New Home Family Worship Center here in Hammond, Louisiana. And I'm so grateful to God that you have tuned in with us today to fellowship and to worship with us on this morning. Listen, really quickly, will you please share this page, invite your family and friends, Tell them to tune in with us on today. I won't keep you long, but I do believe God has a word for us. Amen. That'll be a blessing to all of our hearts. So let's get as many people as we can to fellowship with us on this morning. Amen. So listen, following this praise and worship from our minister of music, I will be back with the word from God. God bless your hearts again. Happy Resurrection Sunday morning to all of you God's children. Let's get our praise and worship on. I'll be back, y'all. you Lord and we bless your name hallelujah we feel your presence in this atmosphere so we lift our hands in worship we open our mouths and we bless your name hallelujah hallelujah we feel you moving Lord Lord I feel you you're in the atmosphere, your presence is here, we feel you, yeah, Lord, we're desperate for you, Lord, I'm thirsty, I need more, I need your power, Lord. Come on, wave in the atmosphere. I feel you moving. Hallelujah. Move, oh Lord, in me. I feel you moving. I feel you moving. I need you. 
in favor to you all and happy resurrection again to you all thank you so very much for being here today 
Amen. I promise I will not keep you long, but let's get our Bibles and whatever we have the word of God on on today. And let's go to a very familiar passage of scripture. We're going to the book of John chapter 20. John chapter 20 verses 1 through 2. And the Bible reads, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and see it the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. I want to talk to us this morning using as a subject, I'm glad he wasn't there. I'm glad he wasn't there. In this passage of scripture, the Bible tells us that Mary Magdalene, early in the morning, while it was still dark, went to the sepulchre, to the tomb rather, where Jesus' body was laid to rest. And as she approached the sepulchre, she noticed that the stone that the people positioned and placed in front of the tomb had already been rolled away. Listen. God told me to tell some of you who uh, are listening to me right now and you're worried about something that you have to face or something that you're dealing with or something that you have to go through. God told me to tell you today, stop worrying because it's already been rolled away. Good God help me today. He said that problem that you're worrying about is already been rolled away. The situation that you're worrying about is already been rolled away. The issue that you're contemplating is already been rolled away. The dilemma that you're, that you're thinking about is already been rolled away. The thing with your family, the thing in your marriage, the thing with your children, with your, with your spouse, with your finances, God said it's already been rolled away. He said, everything you're worried about, everything that you're dealing with, everything that you have to go through, everything that you have to face, God said, it's already rolled away. This is why, people of God, Jesus told the disciples in John 16 and 3, he said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Good God help me today. He said, everything that you'll ever have to deal with is already been rolled away. It doesn't matter how big it may seem. It doesn't matter how small it is. It doesn't matter how long you've been dealing with it. God said it's already rolled away. That's one of the amazing things and wonderful things that I love about God. And, and, and that is while we're trying to figure it out, man, God has already worked it out. <laughs> While we're trying to figure out what to do, God has already worked it out. It's already been rolled away. The Bible says that that Mary Magdalene, as she was as she was going to the tomb where Jesus was, she looked and saw that the stone was already rolled away. And, and, and out of fear, I can imagine the fear uh, that struck her uh, when she when she saw that the stone was already rolled away. Uh, she ran to Simon Peter and another disciple and she told them, she said, they have taken away our Lord out of the sepulchre and and we know not where they have laid him. They, they took Jesus out of the tomb and we don't know where he is. Listen, people of God, I can't be mad at Mary Magdalene because I don't know about you, but that would be enough to scare me or to make me afraid if I didn't know where Jesus was in my life. If, if I didn't know where Jesus was in my life, that would be enough to make me afraid. That would be enough to scare me when when you don't know where your savior is. When you don't know where your redeemer, when you don't know where your protector, you don't know where your healer, your deliverer, your way maker, your miracle worker, your promise keeper, your light in the darkness, your lily in the valley, your prince of peace, your mighty counselor. When you don't know where Jesus is in your life, that would be enough to make you scared. That would be enough to make you afraid. 
That would be enough, man, to make me fearful. But thank God we don't have to worry about that because Jesus told us in Matthew 28 and 20. He said, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Thank you, God. See, we don't have to be scared or afraid because Jesus is always with us. In the midst of our trials and tribulations, Jesus is with me. In the midst of my triumphs and celebrations, Jesus is with me. When things are not so good, Jesus is with me. When things are going good, Jesus is with me. When I can't see no way out, Jesus is with me. And when I'm delivered out, Jesus is with me. We don't have to be scared or we don't have to be afraid like, like Mary Magdalene was at that moment because Jesus is always with us. Jesus is always with us. But Mary the Magdalene, when she, when she went to the sepulchre, when she went to the tomb, she saw that the, the stone was, was already rolled away. And, 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 and out of fear, she ran and she, she told Peter and, and one of the other disciples, the Bible says another disciple that Jesus loved, that, that they have taken Jesus' body and, 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 and we don't know I don't know where they, where, where they laid him. He's, he's not there. And if you read down in, in, in John chapter 20, uh, uh, verses 3 through 13, which I'm, I'm going to paraphrase. You can go back and read it for time. The Bible tells us then that Peter and the other disciple, uh, they ran to, 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 to the grave. They ran to the tomb where, where they was. And, and when Peter got there, the Bible says he stooped down and he looked and he saw the linen clothes. Lying where, 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 uh, where Jesus was not. And, 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 and when he came, uh, uh, the other uh, uh, disciple, when he got there, he looked and he saw the napkin that was about his head lying next to the linen clothes. But, 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 but those things were wrapped together, but Jesus' body was not there. And so they, the, the Bible says they left and, and they went out. And they knew not yet the scripture that, that he must rise again uh, from the dead. So Mary Magdalene, the Bible says she stays there and she's weeping and, and she looks inside and she sees these two angels sitting, uh, one at the head and one at the feet of where the body of Jesus was laid. And they said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? And Mary said, because they have taken away my Lord and I know not where they have laid him. And the angels sitting on the tomb, they said, why are you weeping? And she said, they took my Lord and I don't know where they have laid him. How many of y'all are truly glad today that when they went to the tomb, that Jesus wasn't there? I'm glad today that that when they went to the tomb to see Jesus, that that Jesus wasn't there. One of the things that normally makes me upset, people of God, is is when I go to visit someone and and I get there to see them and they're not there, especially if, you know, I, I really wanted to see them or or I needed them for something and, and they're nowhere to be found. But when Mary went to the tomb to see Jesus, I'm glad that he wasn't there. I'm glad that he wasn't still laying in that borrowed tomb. I'm glad that he wasn't still wrapped in those linen clothes. I'm glad that he still wasn't in the place where, where they laid his body. I'm glad that Jesus wasn't there. And the reason why I'm glad that, that he wasn't there is because he wasn't there. And by him not being there, he was able to eliminate sin from everywhere. Did, did y'all hear that, people of God? I'm glad he wasn't there because he was able to eliminate sin from everywhere. See, when he left there, all of our sins left with him. Good God, help me today, God. He, when he left there, all of our sins left with him. John says in 1 John 2 and 2, he tells us that he is the propitiation for our sins. 
and not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. All of our sins are gone because he was gone. Help me today, God. When he left, all of our sins left. When he was gone, all of our sins were gone. This is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 55, he said, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, this is why we don't have to be afraid of death, y'all. This is why you don't have to worry about your sins anymore. You should be shouting and giving God praise and, and giving God glory because, because you don't have to worry about your sins anymore. It, it's thank be to Jesus that you don't have to worry about it anymore. He said, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from all our sins in his own blood. Man, I'm so thankful and glad that when they went to the tomb to see Jesus, that he wasn't there. Because when he left there, all of my sins left. Good God. When he got up from there, all of my sins got up from there. All of my sins was gone. I'm so glad that, that, that he was not still wrapped in those linen clothes, laying in that borrowed tomb in, in the place that, that they put him in. But he had got up and he was gone. I'm glad that he wasn't there. Another reason why I'm glad that he wasn't there. I'm glad that he wasn't there because if he was still there, we wouldn't be able to be with him up there. Good God help me today. If he was still there, we wouldn't be able to be with him up there. See, because he wasn't there. He made it possible for us to be with him up there. But if he would have still been there, then we wouldn't be up there. Help me today, God. We wouldn't be able to, to get up in the heavens. We wouldn't be able to be, as the Bible says, sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Because he got up from there, we're able to sit with him in heavenly places. And look, I, I, I like to think of that as being uh, uh, in one of the best seats in the house. When you're sitting in Christ Jesus, you're sitting in one of the best seats of the house. And, and I, I've shared this before, that when I think about sitting in Christ Jesus, I think about uh, sitting in, in the movie theater, uh, in, in, on the very top row, in the middle seat. To me, that's the best seat in the house. And the reason why I say that's the best seat in the house is because when I'm sitting in that movie theater in that middle seat on the top row, I don't have to worry about what's behind me. Good God help me today. I don't have to worry about what's behind me. When you're in a movie theater and you're sitting up there on the top row in, in the back seat, in the middle, you don't have to worry about what's behind you. You don't have to worry about people kicking your chair or people pulling your seat back because nothing is back there. When you're seated in Christ Jesus, you don't have to worry about what happened behind you or what you did in the past because ain't nothing back there no more. Good God. There's nothing there back there because if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things become brand new. Your sins are passed and you did not remember anymore. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. When you're sitting in Christ Jesus, man, you're sitting in the best seat in the house. I'm so glad that, that he was not there because it, it enabled me to even right now sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm able to sit in the best seat in the house when I'm sitting in Christ Jesus. Man, we in the best seat in the house. There's nothing better. But we're sitting in the place of victory. But we're sitting in the place of victory. There's nothing that we have to worry about. All of our sins are forgiven. The sins, we've, the sins we've, we've committed, the sins that we're committing now, and the sins that we're going to commit, we don't have to worry about them because he wasn't there. He wasn't there. And when he got up from there, all of our sins went with him. 
all of our sins were, were, were washed away. I'm glad that he wasn't there. When Mary went to that tomb and, and she went looking for him, I'm glad that he wasn't still laid in the tomb. I'm glad that, that the tomb couldn't hold him and, and the grave couldn't keep him. I'm glad that when they went to find Jesus in the tomb, that he wasn't there. And I'm glad because because he wasn't there. I know that he still lives. I, I, I'm glad that he wasn't there because the fact that he wasn't there, it lets me know that, that he's still alive. He still lives. And because he lives, as the psalmist says, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. B because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he's lived. I'm glad today, people of God, that he wasn't there. Because he still lives. He's still alive today. He's still working miracles today. He's still saving today. He's still healing today. He's still delivering today. He's still working miracles, making ways. He's still alive. I'm glad today that he wasn't there. Because he wasn't there, he's able to be here with me today. He's able to be here with us today. I'm glad that, that he wasn't there when Mary went looking for him. I'm glad that he wasn't there when, 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 when they saw the, the, the linen clothes that, was, that he was wrapped in. I'm glad that he wasn't there because him not being there. Let's me know that he's still alive today. He's still alive today. He's still living in us right here with us today. And here's the thing, people of God. He wants to live in you. You may be watching me today and maybe you don't know about this Jesus this, this Savior that we're preached about. You, maybe you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior. Can I tell you that everything he endured on that cross, he did that and he did it for joy. He endured it with joy. He did it for you because he loves you and he wants to come in and be Lord of your life, but he will not force his way in. You have to invite him into your heart. Maybe you say, I know Jesus is Lord, but I've backslidden. I've fallen out of fellowship. Listen, all you have to do is come back. He's here waiting for you, waiting for you to return so that he may return and restore you back to your rightful place in him. Maybe you're there and you say, I'm a part of a ministry. I'm a part of a church, but that church is not changing my life for the better. I say to you that if your church is not changing you, you better change your church. Or maybe you just want to make sure your soul is saved. Listen, pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you now just as I am. I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. I ask you to wash me now with the precious blood of Jesus. I confess him now as Lord of my life. And I believe in my heart that he is your son and that you raised him from the dead. And he is now sitting on your right hand side, interceding for me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Lead me and guide me. And I thank you today for saving me. Listen, if you prayed this prayer with me, I want you to know that you are saved. And what you need to do now is find yourself a Bible-based ministry, a place where the Word of God is being taught, believed, practiced, and work in wonders in the lives of God's people. And I believe that New Home Ministries is such a place. If you would like to be a part of the New Home Ministries here in Hammond, Louisiana, maybe you say, I'm nowhere near Hammond, but I still feel God leading me to be a part. We have cyber members all over the globe and we would love for you to be a part of our cyber ministry. 
email us your contact information to that email address that's on the screen and one of our ministers and elders will reach out to you and pray with you and formally welcome you into the body of Christ. But for right now, for those of you who have accepted Jesus into your heart, you become a part of the body of Christ. And then to those of you that God is leading you to be a part of New Home Ministries, let me be the first one to say, welcome to the family. God bless you. Know that we love you with the love of Christ and that we are praying with you and praying for you that the favor and the blessings of God just overtake your life. Know that this has been one of the best decisions that you could ever make for your life. And we thank God for you becoming part of our family. We pray God's blessings and favor overtake you. Welcome to the family. God bless you. We love you. Be blessed today. God, now it is giving time. Amen. This is our opportunity and time to sow back into the kingdom of God through our ministry of giving. Amen. So let's prepare our hearts, our minds, our spirits to sow back into the kingdom of God on today. There are some of you who would like to honor the Lord with your tithes on this morning. There's some of you who would like to bless God with the liberal and cheerful offering. And then there are some of you who may need to sow a seed. You have something specific that you need God to do in your life, something that you're praying for. Today, I challenge you to sow that seed and believe that God will meet the need of the seed. Amen. But whatever category it is, whatever state you're in, let's not miss this opportunity to tap back into and sow back into the kingdom of God through the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. Amen. So those of you who would like to honor God with your tithes, let's do that. Let's get those offerings together. Let's do it liberally and cheerfully. And let's get those seeds and sow into good ground. Amen. If you look across the screen, there are multiple ways today where you can do that. Choose one of those mechanisms. You can use New Home Family Worship Center in Hammond on the Givelify application. Uh, you'll see my picture, picture of the ministry. You can go to Cash App by going to dollar sign NH Hammond number one. Or you can mail it to the physical address that's on the screen and one of our recorders will take care of that for you. But whichever way you do, let's not miss this opportunity. Amen. So God bless your hearts today. Listen, let's pray as we get ready to do this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us with this time and this moment and this opportunity. God, we thank you for all that you've blessed us with, that you've entrusted and shared and, and given us, God, in the form of uh, finances and wealth. Now, Father, as we give, we give back to you, believing and trusting in your word, God, that you would do what your word says. And God, you said that if we give, you'll give back to us good measures pressed down, shaken together and run it over. I thank you, Lord God, for receiving this from liberal, cheerful spirits, from faithful and committed servants. God, and we thank you that every seed being sown will, be, will reap a harvest in return. God, and you will receive this and yield increases in the lives of your people, be it spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, emotionally, whatever area they need it done. We thank you, God, for doing it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, God bless your hearts and thank you so very much for your faithfulness and your commitment. Amen. And believing and trusting God and taking him at his word, sowing into his ministry, into his kingdom. And I bless God for you and I pray God's favor just rest upon your life. Amen. God bless you today. I know you were blessed by the word on today, just like I was. Let's take this opportunity to sow a seed into the man of God's life. He labors for us each and every week by providing a word for us and by praying for us. You can use one of the giving mechanisms listed at the bottom of the page. I know if you sow into the man of God's life, you are sowing into good ground and your life will be blessed. I hope to see you soon. I love you and be blessed. Thank you so very much for being here with us today. I pray you guys were blessed by the word, but as I always tell you, I'm always blessed by you being here with us, fellowshipping with us, and worshiping with us on our worship experience. I wanna invite you to come back, join us this upcoming Tuesday, six o'clock p.m. right here on New Home TV. Tell your family and friends, set reminders so that they can be a part of us as well, amen. God bless your hearts on today. I want you to know that I love you with the love of Christ and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it, not even if you try. 
You can't stop me from loving you, so don't even waste your time with trying to stop me. Remember this, people of God, where there is much prayer, there's much power. Where there is little prayer, there's little power. Where there is no prayer, there is nothing. So stay prayerful, people of God. Go with God and let God go with you. Until next time, may God bless, keep, and favor your life. God bless you. I love you. Be blessed in the Lord.